Wow, that's awesome. Hey, so we're going to transition here. Uh, I'm really excited about uh, our next guest uh, this morning. Um, So uh, Melinda is Joe and Carol's daughter, and she uh, is with an organization called Pioneer Bible Translators, and she is over in Sudan. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not supposed to say that, am I? North that she's in, just cut that out of the tape. I don't know. I'm going to let her do the rest. Uh, so Melinda, come on up. And she's going to share uh, about some of her ministry with us. Don't worry about that. Okay, good. Hi, morning, everybody. Morning. Yeah, don't let the fancy name fool you. I'm just a Moyer. Um, I'm Joan Carroll's daughter. And... Um, Yeah, I actually went to high school just here at Labette County High School. So if you're sitting here thinking, well, I could never move to North Africa, then um, don't be surprised if God does something in your life because I never would have dreamed about that because I was just a, you know, kid going to high school in Labette County High School, and then boom, now I live in North Africa. So you never know what God wants to do with you, and he always has a sense of humor about it too, let me tell you. Um... Because, by the way, I don't even like camping, and I live in a refugee camp, so that's super funny. God, thanks. Um, uh, This, what I'm going to say is just a really broad brushstroke. It's kind of an overview. I guess we could call it a foretaste, um, because I'm I'm speaking more on Wednesday night. A little commercial there. I don't even know the times or anything, but I'm speaking Wednesday night more. So if you wanted to hear more, you could either... Ask me at the end of today, come Wednesday, or just email me and ask me. And I'm sure I would be really happy to answer your questions. So um, let me just dive in really quickly. I've only had three coffees this morning, so I might be a bit sluggish, but we'll see if I can get get this thing going in about 10 minutes here. Um, So when you hear the word uh, refugee camp, like just have something in your mind, refugee camp, right? So does everybody have something in your mind? Okay. So look at the next slide and tell me if that's close to anything that was in your mind. Is that close to anything that was in your mind? So I, this is actually the corner. This is the corner of one path and another. Um, this is where I live, and my fence is actually the grass fence to the very far left corner. So this is my corner. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I don't know what's in your mind, but I'm pretty sure this was nothing. What was in your mind when you were thinking refugee camp? Because you're probably thinking of the things you've seen in the news of these like rows of little tents, the white tents or whatever. And this refugee camp has actually been uh, around since 2011. So um, like eight years, if my math is correct. I'm a language person, not a math person, so I don't know. But um, yeah, it's been around since 2011. So people have built homes in this place, and me, myself, I also have one there. So, what am I doing there? Well, if you look at the next um, slide, the thing that I was trained for um, eight years ago by by Pioneer Bible Translators was for literacy, because, um, you know, the world literacy um, is not that high. Uh, Where we are, I put it, where I personally am right now, I'd probably put it at like less than 10% literacy where I live. And so I'm working in a really specific language. The book that the lady is holding in the picture is one that we developed to help people read this, their particular mother tongue language. Um, But then, you know, I established at the beginning that God has a sense of humor and has you doing things that you never thought you would be doing. Um, But while I was there, I also kind of inherited or I received the Um, dubious and scary and terrifying pleasure of facilitating a Bible translation project too. So if you see the next slide, you will see the product of a year and a half of work. Um, We're we're on a really steep learning curve like this. Um, And that's in Giluca, which is the Gospel of Luke in this language that we've been working in. so just a super quick question. Does anybody know, like I see like sprinkled around here even, some Bibles. Does anybody know how many translations slash paraphrases we have in English? Just throw a number out somebody quickly. Huh? 20? Can I hear another number? 50? Actually, it is like 50. It's like 50 translations of the Bible in English. 
And there are almost 2,000 languages in the world that don't even have one verse of scripture in their language. Out of the almost 7,000 languages that are in the world, there are around 2,000 that don't have any scripture in their language at all. And we have 50, 50 translations slash paraphrases. And even probably like on your phone right there, you probably have also a bajillion translations on your, on your phone. So these people, their language wasn't even written down until 2012. And up until then, it was oral. And some linguists, which are not me, came and uh, wrote the language down. And so then um, we worked and worked and worked and worked and worked with fear and trepidation, because it's God's word. And we came up with the Gospel of Luke, in Luca. Um, since then, we did the dedication, which you'll see on the next um, slide. That would, would have been in February 2nd. 2-2. They thought that was super cool that we did it on 2-2 at 2 o'clock. 2-2-2. Um, so, pudach pudach is 2-2. Um, so, this was 2-2 two -two in, this, in this year, and so they declared that every year on 2-2 two -two will be their day, like their language day. So, even, they're not Christians, really. There's maybe, you know, a small percentage of Christians in their tribe. The rest of them are from a different dominant world religion, um, but they just decided 2-2 two -two would be their day, like for the rest of eternity, that's their day, just because we dedicated the Book of Luke on that day. So you can see they're quite thrilled that, you know, for them it's like, okay, whatever, there's, you know, the Book of Luke, but to them they're just thrilled that somebody cares enough about them to do this for them. So um, they don't know yet, but they're all going to be Christians within a generation, I would say. Um, the next slide just shows um, another thing that we'll be doing. This, this is actually at my house. I live with a family, and this is the, older, the oldest son of the, the family that I live with. His name's Cuckoo. It's true, his name is Cuckoo. Um, the oldest boy of any the oldest, the firstborn boy is always named Cuckoo, so anybody who has boys, you know that that's a, truly, that's a true name, Cuckoo. Um, his name is Cuckoo, and then that's a, the nephew that lives with us also. Um, he's not Cuckoo. Uh, but does anybody see what they're holding? What do they have? What? Yeah, it's a cell phone. It's his dad's cell phone. And they're actually watching Tom and Jerry. <laughs> which in Arabic is Tom and Jerry, Tom and Jerry. And because, you know, there's no words. It's just a lot of violence, which, you know, what refugee doesn't love violence? Um, so anyway, they're watching Tom and Jerry on dad's cell phone. But so one thing that we're going to do when I get back is record the book of Luke on um, little micro SD cards because it's weird, but most people have at least a little like Nokia, like a flip, not even a flip, but a little Nokia which we call Rebecca's for some odd reason. Um, so they either have like a little Rebecca or they have a smartphone that they put memory cards in and they listen to music or they watch videos. Like they know how to Bluetooth stuff. I don't even know how to Bluetooth, but they're like, I'll Bluetooth to that to you. And I'm like, I don't even know how to do that. And they're like, just give me your phone. So anyway, um, the book of Luke then, because like I'd said, most people, don't know how to read and so people walk around with their phone in their back pocket with music playing or they listen to the radio on their phones um, so the book of Luke then is something that people also can listen to and they can receive the Word of God even without being able to read their language so um, which I just like this picture because you can tell cuckoos like not wanting to share right <laughs> I taught them like we have something we call it terrible twos and it's universal, let me tell you. But we love cuckoo, so anyway. Um, so on the next slide, you'll see my um, in contact information. That was a super quick um, whoosh over what's going on. And if you're really confused, then join the club. I am too, most of the time. But um, just if you want to hear more, you can come Wednesday night. 7 p.m. There, it's 7 p.m. I didn't even know the time, so there you go. Come Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Um, and you can hear more about some stories about what's going on in the refugee camp in North Africa and just what we're doing there. Thanks. Don't leave yet. Hey, Darren and Kelvin, will you guys come up here and pray? We want to pray for you. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. You covet prayer, don't you? Yeah.
Yeah. I do too. Okay. Why don't you stand here in the middle? Okay. Would you guys pray for her protection and for her ministry to multiply? You want to pray? Pray with me. Lord, we just want to thank you that um, you allow us to uh, be in your presence and to receive mercy and to find grace to help us in, in our time of need. And we know um, uh, just the, the, the vast need um, on the face of the earth. I think sometimes we get so ingrown and so um, uh, ingrained in the things that we do in our own daily grind that we don't look around us at the, at the big C church. Um, around the world and, and, and the need to take your, your word to the nations. And uh, Lord, I just want to thank you for um, uh, the work that you are doing through Pioneer and uh, those who have dedicated their lives to you uh, through it. Lord, I just pray uh, that you would uh, give them protection and grace and uh, Lord, um, just power of the mind to understand language uh, so that your gospel is, is, uh, is spread through uh, the ends of the earth. Uh, the deepest parts, Lord, and I and I pray for the hearts and the souls of the people that are there, that they would understand, Lord. We know that your word is like a double-edged sword, uh, penetrating uh, uh, the joints of marrow and uh, judging the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart, Lord. I just pray that that uh, that your word uh, would, would pierce the hearts of people, and that they would understand what you endured uh, on the cross to to save them. And uh, that they would follow you, and 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 uh, Lord, I just pray that there would be generations that that, that seek you uh, because of the work that the pioneer is pioneer is doing. Dear God, I just continue in agreement, uh, Lord, thanking you for Melinda for her courage and her desire to spread the word for you, and being in a different part of the country, different culture, and. Uh, just uh, being able to spread the word to people that's never heard of you. And uh, I just pray that you'll continue guiding uh, this organization of Pioneer and that you will uh, work in a mighty way and uh, be able to uh, guide people and realize their hope in this life of eternal life. And I just turn that to you. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, it's nothing much, but we do want to present you uh, with three hundred dollars uh, to help in the ministry and to help further it. So, God bless you, and we can't wait to see what the Lord does. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> all right. What do we do now? Okay. <laughs> Speaking of translations, um, many of you have already commented on this. I bought a new Bible this week. Woohoo! Yeah! Go for it. Okay. You know, for me, getting a new Bible is, is a paramount day, right? Because you're, you're taking the old one and you're kind of putting it on the shelf and you're going to break in a new one and, and you just look at it and all the pages are crisp and it's pretty awesome. Uh, they turn real easy, smells good. Um, but, you know, you look at the old one and it's got duct tape on it and it's falling apart and the pages are bleeding and, and you can't read it and then 45% of the pages have coffee stains on them. And, <laughs> and you know that his word is sweet, right? And, uh, and you've dove into it, and you've read it. And so getting a new Bible, it's, like, it's almost like a fresh start. It's pretty exciting. Uh, so in case you're wondering, I bought a different translation uh, this time. Um, I still, I use all kinds of translations. Um, but this time, I've always wanted an NLT, which stands for New Living Translation. I love reading it. Uh, I read it on my phone, I read it on my computer, but I've never owned a hard copy of a New Living Translation, and I was really excited uh, to get this, and the day was made even more special uh, because my daughter, Afton, uh, got a new Bible as well, 
And she's so excited because her name got engraved on it. You know, her last one was a paper copy or a hard copy, but, but this one has her name on it. And I mean to tell you, she is proud of it. And she won't stop reading it into a dad's heart. That makes me so happy, right? Um, but if you have your Bibles, we are going to open up the Word today and, and dive into it briefly. Um, one of my favorite psalms in the, in the Old Testament, psalms are in the Old Testament, one of my favorite psalms is Psalm 67. So turn your Bible with me to Psalm chapter 67. Psalm 67. But before that, I get there, um, there's a great quote by a theologian that I disagree with on 75% of things um, because, um, well, I'm not going to go there today. Anyway, uh, I disagree with him on a lot of things, but he has this quote uh, that I've used several times, but it just blows my mind. It's like, man, why have I never thought of that? That's such a, such a good quote. And this is what he says. Uh, the guy's name is John Piper, and, and John Piper said this. He said um, that missions is not ultimate. Worship is. Why? Because man is not ultimate. God is. Isn't that great? I'm going to say it again. Missions is not ultimate. Worship is. Because man is not ultimate. God is. And, and let me break that down for you real quick. We talk about missions all the time, but missions really is uh, trying to put the emphasis on one thing and one thing alone. It's that God deserves worship. The whole earth is filled with his glory, and, and our responsibility in missions is to lead others to worship. In Psalm chapter 67, it starts out like this. May God be merciful and bless us. May his face smile with favor on us. I love that. May God be merciful and bless us. May his face smile with favor on us. If I was to ask the vast majority of people, has God blessed you? Most people would say, absolutely, God has blessed me. And I would ask a follow-up question like this. How has God blessed you? And the vast majority of people, maybe not you, but the vast majority of people are going to say, man, he put a roof over my head. He pulled me out of the deepest pit. He, he gives me finances that I can, that I can you know, spend on and bless other people with. How has God blessed you, man? He gave me a child. He did this for me. He did this for me. But what I want us to focus on real quick and hone in on today is that whenever I ask the question, has God blessed you? What, what I really want to focus on is that he gave his son for us. <laughs> yeah, he gives us a home and he gives us finances and he heals us of sicknesses and all these kinds of things, but he literally gave his son to die for us. I mean, that's the simple gospel, right? May God be merciful. Mercy is that God is withholding judgment which we deserve. God is withholding his judgment from us. He is being merciful to us. Although we do deserve something, mercy shown by God is that whenever we deserve death, he gives us life. For all have sinned and fallen short of what? The glory of God of God. Mercy, may God be merciful. Mercy is God withholding judgment. Grace is him giving us something when we didn't really ask for it. May God be merciful and bless us. Man, has God blessed you? Yeah, he saves us. He is mighty to save. It continues. May his face, face smile with favor on us. Whenever you picture God in your mind's eye. What do you picture? We did a thing like this 
uh, with the youth group not too terribly long ago, back in the spring. And I made everybody close their eyes, and I, and I started talking about God. And I asked them, I said, now open your eyes, and they all have p- pieces of paper in front of them. And I said, whenever you picture the, the Lord's face and how he sees you, how do you picture him? And it was very telling, because a lot of them drew the emoji with his, with his mouth like this, straight across, like, yeah. Some people drew a frowning face, and I asked them, why, why, a, why a frowning face? Because, because I know that I've fallen short of him. I, I know that I've not kept his command. I know that I've sinned. So they draw frowning faces, and, and some of them drew big beards and can't say that that's not accurate. (laughs) But what has always stuck in my mind is that only one student out of the 20 drew a smiley face. One student. And I asked the student, I said, why did you choose to draw the smiley face when everybody else is drawing frowning faces and big beards and the line across as as just kind of a meh God? Why did you choose to draw a smiling face? And his response has stuck with me ever since. And I want all of us to grab this. May the Lord's face smile with favor on us. I asked him, why did you draw a smiling face? And this is what he said. Because I have been washed in the blood. Oof. Let me ask you, when you picture the Lord's face, do you picture him smiling on you because of Jesus' atoning sacrifice on the cross? Or do you picture him frowning at you? Just what is it that you picture? Because, Because of the atoning sacrifice of Jesus letting his blood pour out for us upon the tree of Calvary, we are redeemed. We are saved. May his face Smile with favor on us. It's not a favor that we've earned. It's not a redemption that we've earned. It's not a salvation that we've earned. It's because Jesus, being rich in mercy, being full of grace and forgiveness, Jesus, that Jesus, offers us salvation. And because of his redeeming blood, God no longer sees us in our fallen state. If we have been washed in the blood of Jesus, God no longer sees us as though we are fallen. He sees us as though we are full of Christ. Isn't that good news? He says, may your ways be known throughout the earth. Your saving power among people everywhere. We understand that in the book of Revelation chapter 7. John sees a vision. And he said that upon the throne surrounding it was people from every nation, tribe, tongue, language, bowing down, worshiping, singing, amen, blessings and honor and glory Belong to you, Lord. May his ways be known throughout the earth. You know, I'm convinced that for a vast number of us, we can profess our faith in Christ. And unfortunately, we don't look any different to the world around us. And it's a sad quality Because we are still baby Christians, baby disciples, and we have yet to experience the fullness of Christ. I love this. May your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere. Yet the nations praise you, God. Yes, may all nations praise you. I want to go back to the Piper quote. Missions is not ultimate. Worship is. So I'm going to ask you a really bold question. Are you worshiping the same on Monday as what you professed 
on Sunday? Are you lifting up the name of Jesus the same on Thursday, the same way you professed the resurrection on Sunday? May your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise you, God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for what? Joy. May us, let us sing for joy. You know, I was thinking this, uh, this week, and um, I know that'll blow some of your minds, but um, I was thinking about our blessings. And whenever we, whenever we think about how God has blessed us, and we understand the scripture says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. But whenever I'm thinking about God blessing me and God showing mercy and grace to me, it reminded me of a parable that Jesus told in Matthew chapter 13. Now in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus is talking to some people and he, and he gives this short parable. Listen to this. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything that he owned to get enough money to buy the field. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. And then the man discovers this treasure. And he goes back to his home place and he sells everything that he has and goes back and buys the field where the treasure is. Let me tell you something real quick. The treasure is not the blessings of God. The treasure is not God putting a home over our heads and God giving us a, a, a job on, on whenever we prayed for it. Those, those are all good things and good and perfect things come from above. But the real treasure is Jesus himself. It's just him. We get to come before the throne of God because of what Jesus did. The veil has been torn from top to bottom. Jesus is the doorway. He is the gateway. He is the good shepherd. He is the vine. We are the branches. The true treasure is just Jesus. So if, if I was to ask, and you guys have heard this a thousand times, if you could go to heaven and the streets are paved with gold and you have your beautiful mansion and, 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 the, and the fescue grass is as high as your hips and horses and cows are just grazing everywhere and there's no sin and everything is perfect and the sun's not even shining and it just it's like a 70 degree day and it's just amazing but Jesus isn't there would you still want it? The true treasure is just Jesus. He continues, May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, let all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for joy because you govern the nations with justice and you guide the people of the whole world. Yes, may all the nations praise you, O God. He's going to say this like 20 times. May all the nations praise you. Jesus, after he gives the parable of the treasure hidden in a field, he follows it up with another one. Catch this. Again, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything that he owned and he bought it. I'm not going to like that about this Bible. He bought and then flipped the page. It, period. <laughs> Don't like that. Okay. <laughs> Jesus is the pearl of great value. In this parable of the man finding the treasure in the field and the merchant that finds the pearl of great value, there's something in common about both 
the farmer and the merchant. What is it? They both go and sell everything that they have in order to get what? The treasure and the pearl. Who is the treasure and the pearl? Jesus. So let me ask you, maybe you've not been convicted like this before, but to what length are you willing to commit just to have Jesus? I was reading the other day in one of the Facebook posts, uh, Facebook groups that I'm a part of, of a pastor um, in a unnamed country, and unnamed because I forgot. I'll go look it up later. This pastor had just converted to being a disciple of Jesus two years ago. Now, whenever he converted to follow Jesus, he had left Islam. And not only did he leave Islam and follow Jesus, he brought others with him. Now they were so convinced that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the King, that Jesus really is the chosen one, they sold everything to follow him. They gave up their families and their careers. They literally lost everything to follow Jesus and to go tell others about him. In this Facebook, Facebook group this week, he asked for prayer. And he was so calm about it, you can tell by the words that he chose to use. He said, brothers, will you pray for me? And in the next following paragraphs, he explained all of what I just told you, but ended with this. The disciples that chose to follow Jesus alongside me have just been murdered. Will you pray for their families? And will you pray for me that I might go make more disciples? Wait a minute. They just got killed, and yet he is wanting to commit even more. You see, the beautiful thing about Jesus is even in the face of suffering, even in the face of tribulation and trials and persecution, and he is still our treasure. He's still our pearl. And he tells us, why be afraid of those who can take your body? Be afraid of the one that governs your soul. So to what level of commitment are you willing to go to? Or are we going to be the ones that get to work on Monday and forget what we profess today? Are we going to be the ones that get to Friday and say, Oh man, I can't wait till, till church on Sunday because I need to be filled back up. Or are we going to be the kind of worshipers that worship all day, every day? The psalm continues, may the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then what? The earth will yield its harvest. And God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, the psalmist says, God will bless us and people all over the world will bless fear him. Jesus and Jesus alone is the only way. He professes his kingship in John chapter 14 verse 6 when he says this, I am the way, the life, the truth and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. Besides me, no one comes to the Father. So let me ask you this morning, what is your commitment level to that Jesus? Not just this little figurine Jesus that we often picture a lot of times, a Jesus that has no power, a Jesus that has no, you know, he only has this much grace, but I have this much problems, right? He only has this much mercy, but I need this much, right? Whatever you picture of Jesus, believe me, he is abundantly more. However much grace you picture that Jesus has, believe me, 
multiply that by infinity. However much mercy you believe that Jesus will show you, multiply it by infinity. Whatever you picture of Jesus, whether it be the six pound, seven ounce baby Jesus, or the Jesus that's wearing a tuxedo t-shirt singing lead vocals to Leonard Skinner, whatever Jesus you picture, believe this, he is vastly and abundantly more. I'm really excited. Next week, we're going to start a new series called Made for More. We're going to start a new series next week called Made for More out of the book of Ephesians. So I want to invite you uh, this week uh, to read Ephesians chapter 1. Now, next week, I'm going to cover Ephesians chapter 1, so I want you to be prepared for it. But the whole emphasis on the book of Ephesians in our, in our sermon title, our sermon series called Made for More, is just refocusing our minds on the person and the kingship of Jesus. So I'm really excited about that, and I pray uh, that you will take it seriously, and, and that whenever we dive into it, that you will already have your mind and your heart prepared for the Jesus that is abundantly more to do abundantly more with you. I'm going to pray. Uh, Kelvin's going to talk about offering, and we're going to close it out. Sound good? Father, we lift up the name of Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, the one that created the heavens and the earth, the one that was before all things, the Jesus that is the creator, not the created. We lift up the, that Jesus, the one that is far more abundantly more than what we could ever think or imagine. The Jesus that created the universe, yet still cares about <coughs> us. The Jesus that, that knows the number of hairs on our head. The Jesus that can see into our hearts. The Jesus that knows our thoughts before we even think them. We lift up that Jesus. Father, that you will continue to reign, that your lordship might be known throughout the earth, that your children, those of us that are blessed enough to call, a, call ourselves children of God, Father, that we might have the spirit of boldness, not the spirit of timidity, to come before your throne and to take your word seriously that we might share our testimony and share our faith with those around us. Let us never, Lord, let us never become complacent for those that are going to spend eternity without you. Father, give us the spirit of boldness that we might be able to profess our faith <coughs> and lead them not to a particular church or lead them not to a particular religion or whatever, but lead them solely to you, Jesus. You are so good. So good. In Jesus' name, amen.